Welcome everyone to another Blender Days of Type. Uh, this time we're looking at fur. And in particular, uh, I wanted to investigate and learn more about how to direct fur, how to animate fur. And uh, the scene that kind of came to mind when I was thinking about this was that scene in Ratatouille where the rats are escaping and uh, they're floating down that river. They change from an inside scene to the outside where it's raining and into the water. Their fur is dry and then it is wet, obviously. And in particular where Remy is in the tunnel and he actually goes underneath some dripping water and it actually falls on him and has an effect on his fur. So I wanted to try and replicate that if I could. And I kind of discovered that there isn't a lot we can actually do when it comes to animating our hair. And the primary reason for that is that once you groom the fur, uh, once you stylize how you want it to sit on the character, you can't move it anymore. We don't have what we have in meshes, the ability to create shape keys. Now, this was actually created for the Gooseberry project, uh, where they created a very simple form of shape keys for hair, but it was apparently never really used in the short film, and so therefore never really implemented into Blender. And to be honest, I never really thought about it. I knew Blender could do fur. Uh, some of the characters that I've seen with fur and hair look fantastic online. Uh, some of the animated characters look good. And you just simply don't think about the implication of not being able to actually animate the fur. So I did what I could to create a breeze uh, moving the fur. I did what I could to emulate the fur getting waterlogged and wet. Uh, but uh, not being able to animate the fur with shape keys really highlighted a deficiency. So if you go online, you'll find a, a discussion on Blend Artists about this. Uh, you'll see the video where they implemented it uh, or created it rather. Uh, there's a link down here to the uh, wiki. Uh, it says page not found, but in the wiki archive, it's there. Uh, this is an interesting read, uh, the whole thing. The part of, about shape keys is just here down near the end. Uh, that's interesting as well. But ultimately, it was never included in Blender. There is a add-on. Uh, the link will be in the description as well. If you are animating your character, animating the hair in any way, you are going to need this add-on. Have a look at uh, some of the videos that they have here. It really shows why this kind of capability is so vital in Blender. So have a look at the videos. You'll see what I mean. It's just when I saw these videos, I realized that it was something that I personally had overlooked and hadn't really considered. So have a look at those. I'm not affiliated in any way uh, with VFX Grace or this add-on. So, uh, But the link will be in the description if you need to have a look at that. Uh, there is a discussion on a, what is it, right-click select about shape keys uh, for hair particles. Uh, not much is being said. Like I said, it's overlooked, and I really didn't think about it, and I'm sure most other Blender users, unless they are doing something with fur and animation, you're simply just not going to think about it. So have a look at that feed as well. Add a vote or something if you really want this pushed in Blender. Uh, all the best to this add-on creator. Uh, it is something that Blender needs, and at the very least, you have this capability, at least buying an add-on and still having that capability in Blender. So back in Blender, I'll just, uh, to begin with, I, I used Eevee, and if you're going to use Eevee, uh, you really need to, in order for this to work, it needs to be set to strip, not strand. So that's a beginning point. I'll just go to the particle systems. I've got three particle systems to get the look that I wanted. I'll just turn that off for a moment. So 
Yeah, we'll talk first of all about the breeze. Uh, so if I just play this, it's very slow with the particle systems. But what's actually happening is that's your classic displace modify on the mesh itself using an empty as the origin point to, if we go to displacement, it's just using a cloud texture, but that empty is actually moving this cloud texture uh, from uh, right to left. So the bumps are actually moving from right to left and the hair follows along. Uh, you'll notice that I've got an initial particle system, which is actually the coarse, dense fur that's close to the body of the character. And I don't particularly want that to move in the wind. Then I have the displace modifier. Now it is moving the mesh, but it's not affecting that particle system. It's only going to affect these two particle systems that are the longer fur types. And you would expect that to move in a, a breeze. Uh, so we'll just stop that. Go back to the particle systems, turn them on. So the base is a coarse fur. Then I have longer fur that is clumped a little bit. And then uh, some extra pieces of fur that are longer just to give that a more shaggy look. So that's basically the wind, the breeze, how that was created. Very simple. I'll just zoom in here to the fur itself uh, just to get the look of fur. You need to use this hair info node output from intercept into a color amp. And what that is telling the uh, material to do is from the base to the tip to color the follicle from dark to light. Uh, but of course, if you're using a texture map, then that would just be uh, plugged into your texture coordinate node as normal. Using that intercept as well, I'm also telling the hair follicle to be opaque for most of its length and then right at the tip to become uh, transparent. And that's hooked into the alpha. For that to work, Choose that for that to work. You need these uh, particle systems, the blend mode and shadow mode to be alpha hashed. Now, I don't know if you can see uh, in this video, but that is a little bit pixelated. And all that has to do with is the amount of samples that the image is being rendered at. So if I can just find that, yep. So the viewport is 10, so you're getting this pixelated look. Uh, and the more passes you have in your render, the more refined and cleaner that'll look. So at about 300, I found that it gave a nice smooth appearance and a nice fall off to transparency. So let's have a look at the process of changing it from dry fur to wet fur. So here we are at the beginning, down here in the timeline, uh, the fur is reacting to the breeze. And then as it rains, uh, the fur becomes wet and waterlogged. So first off, you'll notice the hair follicles are a lot uh, wider, thicker. I wanted to sort of create a waterlogged feel so I'll just go to the particles. They're all basically following the same rules. So what's happened here is that they're all connected to a controller. As we've done with the previous videos, the different aspects of this fur is connected to a controller via a driver. And as this driver animates from zero to whatever arbitrary value I have here in the Z direction, 
it changes the look and feel of the material, the thickness of the of the fur, uh, and so on. So if I go back to particle itself, that driver is controlling the root diameter of these of these uh, particles. So back in the beginning, they're thin, and then as they get wet, they become thicker and more waterlogged. And that's really the only change I've made. You can't change the uh, direction of these particles. Unfortunately, that's what shape keys would give you. I wasn't able to animate the weight of the water uh, making the fur drip or droop, sorry. That's not possible, unfortunately. That's why you need shape keys in order to animate that movement. So everything is really a hack to do with uh, the root diameter to give that waterlogged feel, and then the rest is just simply the material itself. So these are all linked to the same driver. The object is the empty hair controller, which is that cube. And it's connected to its Z location. And they're all the same. So here the driver is controlling this factor where it's mixing from this look, where it's dry and is dark to light along the length of the follicle. And then when it gets up to here where it's wet, it's being mixed with this dark color. As most of you know, when something gets wet, it looks darker. So that's what that is doing. And then it's changing the reflection of it. And changing the roughness wasn't enough. All I really needed was to change this metallic look. And it gave me the look and feel that I, I needed. And that's all just linked to that driver. And as this driver moves in the Z direction, I also uh, stop this wind. So there's no movement. Of course, uh, the breeze isn't going to be able to move waterlogged fur. So at the same time as this uh, driver is moving in the Z direction to create this watered uh, look, uh, this driver slows down as well to create that waterlogged feel. And that is pretty much it. It's a, a bit of a hack. It's fortunate that I was actually able to change uh, the thickness of these, uh, the root diameter of these particles uh, it really helps to convey that waterlogged feel. But unfortunately, that is about it. You really don't have many other options when it comes to animating or directing fur itself. Uh, like I said, have a look at the add on, the videos associated with that, and you'll see what I mean. Having that ability to direct fur particles, hair particles with shape keys really adds so much believability and uh, professionalism, really to any character that has hair, fur, uh, it's something that Blender has kind of overlooked. And like I said, most of us really have overlooked it because you just don't think about it until you need it. Uh, thankfully, there is an add-on. So Blender still is capable of achieving professional results, but it's just not part of Blender itself, unfortunately. Uh, but thanks to the uh, add-on creator, uh, VFX Grace. I'm really glad that add-on is there. Uh, so at least we have that option. I learned a lot out of this project. Uh, I went down some rabbit trails for sure to create this. Uh, at the end of the day, I learned a lot about the pros and cons and what we can and can't do with fur. And I guess the, the lesson learned is that if we know what we can and can't do, then we can tailor the character to meet uh, to meet the abilities of the software, honestly. Uh, so if we can't animate the fur, okay, you don't want to pay for the add-on, okay, then you're going to have to create a character and, and animation sequences that don't require that level of detail. As long as we know that, then we can plan ahead, basically. So I hope that helped. Uh, my name is Martin Staley. Thanks for watching.